Hi, I'm Richie Zellen, and in this video, I want to share an often neglected aspect of learning how to comp. Most jazz guitar lessons on comping I have encountered deal almost entirely on the subject of rhythm. While I agree that this is an important element, I also must stress the importance of learning to interpret chord symbols in a lead sheet in order to fit the context of the musical environment you are comping in. In this lesson, I want to also clear up any confusion you may have as to the different spellings for a variety of chord symbols. But most important of all, I will guide you as to what liberties you may or may not take with them in different comping situations. And we begin now. Welcome back to the Jazz Guitar Channel. And if this is your first time and you want to learn everything you can about the art of jazz guitar, please consider subscribing and be sure to click the bell icon so you won't miss anything. Those of you who are new to jazz guitar may not know the meaning of the term comping. So what is comping? In jazz, it is simply another way of saying a company, as when a keyboard or guitar player supplies the chords behind a soloist. However, comping in jazz entails a more complex degree of rhythmic and harmonic interactivity with the soloist than that found in other genres. And that, of course, is because in jazz, comping is also a form of improvisation, as well as a form of counterpoint that takes place between you and the soloist. In this video, as I mentioned initially, I want to discuss some of the harmonic implications of comping. And a successful outcome here is determined by two factors. The quality of the lead sheet and the musician's experience and understanding of jazz harmony. Even if you are playing without a lead sheet, it is evident that at some point you had one to initially learn the tune. And since this lesson is not directed towards advanced jazz guitarists who have well over a hundred standards memorized, I am going to assume that most of you are still relying on lead sheets. Having said that, I'm sure that you are aware that two different lead sheets for a given standard can vary greatly. One might provide lots of specific information in the chord symbols, while the other may leave way too much to the imagination. So in order to know how to deal with these different scenarios, we must examine different spellings for the most common chord symbols and how to interpret them. So I want to talk about triads, upper extensions, and slash chords. Let's examine triads first. When you see a C or any single letter, it represents a major triad, no seventh. A letter like C followed by a small M, the abbreviation M-I-N or a minus sign denotes a minor triad. A letter like C followed by a small circle or the abbreviation DIM stands for a diminished triad and the letter followed by a plus sign or the abbreviation AUG represents an augmented triad. Now this may sound very straightforward to you but when we just see a naked C we might be expected to play more than just the C major triad. Depending on the context, we might need to add a seventh or more to the chord. Here's where it gets tricky, especially for the rookie jazz guitarist. Many old school fake books were written by classically trained musicians and due to this, they sometimes only tend to use a seventh over the dominant of the key. If you read a standard from one of these lead sheets and you are playing in a jazz setting, it is your responsibility when comping 
to interpret these naked chord symbols and add the proper sevenths that correspond to each chord. Now, depending on your level of understanding, you can also add the proper upper extensions to the chords. Now, doing so is what separates the boys from the men, at least harmonically speaking, when it comes to comping. Now, back to the chord symbols denoting triads, there are instances where even in a jazz setting, a triad should be played as a triad. And this is something that we find in more recent compositions that are not part of the uh, standards repertoire or what is sometimes referred to as the Great American Songbook. Many jazz composers before the turn of this century started using triads as a result of their folk and rock influences. For example, take Pat Metheny. When one of his lead sheets has a triad, it means play the triad only. And the same goes for John Schofield or M Mike Stern to uh, name a few composers who happen to be guitarists. But if in doubt for any reason, always listen to the original recording. Next, let's examine seventh chord symbols, which is what you will encounter in most lead sheets for standards. In most comping situations, this is where the player is expected to exercise his or her knowledge of jazz harmony and add the proper upper extensions to each chord. These are, of course, the 9s, 11s, and 13s. And their application will depend on the context and placement of the chord in the given tonality. If you take the original real books, or even the newer 5th edition uh, published by Hall Leonard, you'll find that many standards are notated using just basic 7th chords. This is done so that the accompanist can choose to embellish each chord according to his or her criteria. This, of course, will vary from player to player according to their harmonic vocabulary. Another Determining factor here is if the comping is happening on a keyboard or on a guitar. If a chord has three available upper extensions, as is the case in chords derived from the melodic minor in its modes, a keyboard player has the resources to play all of them in addition to the basic four-part seventh chord. In other words, he can play a ten-note chord if he desires. Yes, this will sound awfully cluttered, but the possibility is there. We as jazz guitarists, on the other hand, <laughs> on the other hand, no pun intended, <laughs> have only one hand to play our chords and are limited to six strings. At the most, we can squeeze two upper extensions in a chord, and most of the time we will have to get rid of the root and fifth to smooth it out. So when we see just bare seventh chords in a lead sheet, we need to be prepared to choose how we are going to dress those chords up to make them sound jazzier. This also holds true in the opposite scenario in which the chords are saturated with upper extensions. For example, some jazz band charts are written with a piano in mind and sometimes feature chord symbols that might be physically impossible to play on guitar. And the same applies to some of the chord symbols in the new real book series. They leave very little to the imagination. And as a guitarist, you won't always be able to play the chords with all those written extensions. But before I say more about the subject, let's look at the different spellings for seventh chord symbols using C as the root. I will give you some guidelines as to what extensions you can add, but keep in mind that this is not a formal harmony class, so it will be very general and brief. And after this, I will comp over a well-known standard to give you an idea of how I might interpret a lead sheet that doesn't include all the upper extensions. 
But first, let's make sure we understand all the chord spellings. A C major 7 can be spelled C, followed by a capital M, and a 7. Or C, followed by the abbreviation M-A-J, and a 7. Or simply a C, followed by a triangle. When a major 7 is over the 1 of the key, you can add the 9 or the 13. When it's over the 4, it's a Lydian chord, which allows for all of its upper extensions, the 9, the sharp 11, and 13. You get to choose. A C dominant 7 is usually spelled one way, a C followed by a 7. And this is going to vary widely as far as extensions go. Usually, Although not always, if it resolves a perfect fifth down to a major chord, it can use the 9 or the 13th. However, if it resolves a perfect fifth down to a minor chord, it will use a flat 9 or sharp 9, and if you like, a sharp 11. A flat 13 can also replace the fifth, and this becomes what is known as an altered dominant, which I will talk more about in brief. A minor 7 can be spelled C followed by a small m and a 7, or C followed by the abbreviation M-I-N and a 7, or simply a C followed by a minus sign and a 7. Almost all minor chords can use a 9th and the 11th. However, avoid the 9th if it is a 3 minor. A C minor 7 flat 5, also known as a half diminished chord, can be spelled C followed by a small m, a 7, and a flat 5. C followed by the abbreviation M I N and a 7 and a flat 5, or C followed by the half diminished sign, which is a circle with a slash. For most instances, you are safe using the 11th and the flat 13 here. Use the 9th only when the 1 is a 1 minor 6 or 1 minor major 7th chord. A C diminished 7th can be spelled C followed by a small circle and a 7, or C followed by the abbreviation D-I-M and a 7. A C7 augmented can be spelled C followed by a 7 and a sharp 5, C7 followed by the abbreviation A-U-G, or a C followed by a plus sign and a 7. And this chord sometimes implies the more complex altered chord. The altered chord can also be viewed as an alternative for an augmented dominant 7th because it has all the same basic tones, only that the upper extensions are all altered. That is, if you use a 9th, it should be a flatted 9 or sharp 9. If you use an 11th, it should be a sharp 11. The flat 13, of course, is the sharp 5, which should already be a part of the fundamental 7th chord. A C7 altered chord is usually spelled C followed by a 7 and the abbreviation ALT. Another instance that usually implies the use of an altered dominant is when you see a 7 flat 9 or 7 sharp 9 chord. And finally, C dominant suspended 4 chord is usually spelled C followed by a 7 and the abbreviation SUS. And here you can safely add the 9 and the 13. So that should give you a general idea about what you can do with different chord symbols if you know some harmony. Also, don't forget that for each one of these chord types, there are several inversions you need to learn. And this is what will yield what we call a voicing. You could derive several voicings for any given chord symbol. And this in turn will help us through another aspect of comping that is usually not discussed very much. And I am referring to voice leading. When we comp at the point of chord change, for the most part, we want a smooth transition in the highest voice of the chord. Everything must flow and sound connected, not disjointed. This is achieved through voice leading. 
So if you weren't aware of it, you're probably beginning to see now that there is much more to comping than just playing a chord using different rhythms. As a matter of fact, sometimes I get students who ask me why their comping sucks. And I find that it has nothing to do with rhythm. The problem is that they lack chordal vocabulary, which in turn makes them resort to bad voice leading. <laughs> so even if they can swing, the bad voice leading gets in the way of the soloist and the progression they are playing does not flow properly. So let me comp over a progression I'm sure you'll recognize. Look at the lead sheet while I comp that will be on the screen and listen to the added color the upper extensions I use add to the overall progression. But above all, listen to the voice leading in my comping. Here I try to create a simple chord melody which would act as a harmonized counterline for the soloist to improvise over. There is one more form of chord symbol notation that I want to talk about briefly, and I am talking about slash chords. This is when you have a letter such as a D followed by a slash and another letter. And it means that the first letter is a triad while the letter after the slash is a single note played in the bass. So in this example, D slash C is a D major triad with C in the bass. This, by the way, should not be confused with polychord symbols. For example, D with a line above it and a C sitting on top of it. This means a D major triad in the lower half with a C major triad in the upper half of the structure. But getting back to slash chords, they are a way of sometimes simplifying the spelling of an inversion wanted for a chord with specific extensions. And usually the first portion is an upper extension triad. So if we go back to our initial example, D slash C, the D triad is made up of D, F sharp, and A. And in relation to the C, the D is the nine, the F sharp is the sharp 11, and A is the 13th. So if you know your harmony, you will recognize it as a Lydian or Lydian flat seven chord. Another common example would be F slash G. Here the F triad is made up of F, A, and C. In relation to the G bass note, the F is the dominant seventh, the A is the ninth, and the C is a sus4 or 11th, depending on the context. Well, that covers the three main kind of chord symbol styles that you will encounter in most lead sheets. Before I sign off, I'd like to share an unwritten rule for guitarists when comping in an ensemble. If you are a good jazz guitarist and you are the only one comping in the ensemble, you have total freedom to select what you play both rhythmically and harmonically. However, many times this is not the case and you have to share the comping with a keyboard player. The unwritten rule here is that guitarists have to allow the keyboard player to dominate the harmony. <laughs> yeah, I know. Pianists are the lions of the jazz jungle, and like it or not, if you are a guitarist, you have to stay out of his way or their way, and therefore learn how to play around him. And this is not always easy. But I will talk more about this and other special situations in a follow-up to this video 
that I'm gonna call Minimalist Comping for Jazz Guitar. Be sure not to miss it. Well, I hope this has been useful. If so, please be sure to leave me a comment. And if not, leave me a comment anyway. <laughs> but make sure your criticism is of a constructive nature. Also, if you seriously want to learn jazz harmony and improvisation applied to the guitar, be sure to check out my comprehensive courses at bebopguitar.richiezellen.com. We are barely scratching the surface here. You will find a link in the info section directly below this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming lessons. Have fun and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.